the weather outside and the tricky business of predicting just what it will be like tomorrow, not to mention next week or even next month. Satellite, radar, computer models and centuries of precedent are just a few of the tools the modern day forecaster has at hand. But would you depend on a long range forecast to plan a wedding or plant a crop? Well, tonight, Vicki Mabry talks with weathermen and women who claim to have found ways to be more right more often. The way the weather's been behaving lately, it's hard to believe that winter just starts tonight. This is Hotel Heathrow, we call it. In Europe and the United Kingdom, holiday travelers are stranded due to thousands of flight cancellations as airports struggle to cope with snow and ice. Again, the flight was canceled this morning. California is being lashed by storms that could drop up to 10 inches of rain on the coast and have already dumped up to nine feet of snow in the mountains. It's getting worse by the, the minute. And last week, the Midwest was digging out from blizzards that dropped so much snow, the Metrodome in Minneapolis collapsed under the weight. Half the country was plunged into freezing temperatures. Back at the beginning of December, long before any of this wacky weather was showing up on any radar screen, AccuWeather's chief long-range forecaster, Joe Bastardi, was predicting storms that would dump snow on the eastern half of the United States and temperatures cold enough to make it stick around through Christmas. Here's the latest computer model that just came out. For forecast for the white Christmas, you see in the blue and white there. This forecast was put out over a week ago for the same thing. This was my forecast. Actually, it was actually put out even before that. So the computer model is actually moving toward our forecast, which gives us greater confidence. Forecasting is big business. Companies pay big green to know about all that white. So will farmers and brides, who are among those buying three million copies a year of the old Farmer's Almanac. It's been predicting the weather for 219 years. Ours is the oldest continuously published periodical in North America, and by virtue of its popularity, we can only guess it's the most accurate, most reliable, most entertaining. Janice Stillman is only the Almanac's 13th editor. At their offices in Dublin, New Hampshire, she shows us the very first edition, definitely not under glass and well-thumbed. This is 1793 is the first oh. edition, okay? It was produced in 1792. So this is the first one. As you can see too, it's original paper with original notations made on it. Received July 31st. Number one. Number one. <laughs> it's a compendium of useful facts and figures. Sunrise and sunset, so ocean tides, poetry. It's so wet, we look amphibian. Christmas day will feel Car Caribbean. And of course, a year's worth of weather, region by region. The almanac we put together um, in one year's time, okay? And so our weather forecasts, though, which are contained in every Old Farmer's Almanac, are predicted approximately 18 months in advance. How can you but know the weather 18 months in advance? Ooh. The weatherman on TV can barely tell us <laughs> what's right for tomorrow. <laughs> Well, we use three scientific disciplines. We use solar science, which is the study of the activity on the sun, and in particular the sun spots. We use climatology, which is the study of prevailing conditions over time, and we're talking decades, centuries, and even longer. And we use meteorology, which is the study of the atmosphere and the oscillations and the ocean temperature and such as that. All put together using a secret formula, which the almanac keeps locked in a black box. This is it. I keep it here. Nobody would ever think to look for it here, I wouldn't think. It's kept in the museum-like office of Editor Emeritus Judson Hale, whose uncle bought the almanac in 1939. That is your secret yes. formula. It's like yeah. the secret recipe. Exactly. Yes, the almanac has a meteorologist and computers and a website, too. So there is real science that goes. Oh, into absolutely! This. Oh, definitely, yes, yeah. More and more, certainly with the more recent editions. <laughs> All working to help the almanac keep up what it boasts is an eighty percent rate of accuracy. Some of it seems so general that it, you know, who it doesn't know that in this part of the country, in New England, in December there are going to be snowy periods. <laughs> well, you know, certainly there. there 
I mean, snow could occur at any time, but we are, our forecasts are um, sort of deviations from the norm. And then when you get down to the specific, you're talking about, okay, in this region, over this period of time, we expect these events to occur. But it's kind of a, um, a, a broad stroke forecast for the region uh, for that period of time. But you have meteorologists who say they can't predict the weather seven days in advance. How do you do it 18 months in advance? Well, with um, luck, a lot of study, and um, good faith. Luck and faith and secret formulas are not good enough for some in the scientific community. As I like to put it, you know, the blind squirrel finds a nut too. Paul Knight, who lectures on meteorology at Penn State, says the ability to predict weather that far into the future is zero. If they're claiming 80% accuracy, uh, if you just go by climatology, you're going to be right probably 60 or 70 percent of the time. So, so where they're claiming any skill is in on those uh, odd events that they kind of think they can forecast, but there's no proven uh, method that they have. We don't say we're 80 percent accurate all the time. It varies. It varied hugely last winter when that big snowstorm buried the East Coast. To be sure, sometimes our forecasts are exactly spot on, right down to the blizzard and the flake. But last winter, when Baltimore and Washington was paralyzed, what did you say? We did not expect there to be above normal snow conditions there. Exactly right. But in the world of legend and tradition and icon, the old farmer's almanac is tops, receiving kudos from those farmers and brides. More than anything else, it endures as a piece of our past, and strives to live up to its motto. Subscribe and endeavor to be useful with a pleasant degree of humor with every issue. It sounds like a weather forecast. <laughs> <laughs> AccuWeather says there's going to be snow in about 50% of the country on Christmas Day. Do you agree? Uh, it, that's entirely possible. <laughs> <laughs> Way to hedge your bets there. This is Vicki Mabry for Nightline in Dublin, New Hampshire.